All right, we are back. Still three-handed here in Thunder Valley. Blinds up to 25,000, 50,000. Now we have all three players are between three and a half million and four million chips, so all very close in stacks at this point. So one ten from Ravi. You think Jesse will just call here, or do you think that he's getting sick of Taylor three betting? Angle? I think he's going to call. I think so too. Now, what does this mean, Tony, in terms of ICM at this point, with all three players essentially having the same stack? I've got to think that both Taylor and Ravi are so much playing for the win that there's not going to be a whole bunch of ICM considerations going on. I know that doesn't mean they're going to just totally forget about it, but... Uh, so would you say that right now Jesse is the least likely to be the next player eliminated? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. This is an interesting flop. Taylor with trips, Ravi with the uh, king high flush draw. Ravi so far just keeps putting chips in the pot. I... Uh, I really wonder how uh, how Taylor is going to choose to play. Whoa, that's not what I suspected from Murphy after everything we've seen so far. Yeah, I wouldn't have checked the flop. I don't think it's it's a terrible check. No, I don't think so, but it's just not what I expected from Ravi at all. And now Ravi picks up a gut shot on the turn. Looks like Robbie just gonna call. Brick on the river. A value bet from Taylor here. 
not expecting anything but a fold, but Ravi has surprised us before. He can't be thinking about calling here. He has to be thinking about raising, right? I certainly hope so. Robbie certainly does not like to fold. Robbie He'll let that one go. Very reluctant folding king high on that board. Another chip leader here solidifies his lead with that hand. Our barely chip leader at this point, like we were talking about before, these guys are essentially even uh, any man's contest at this stage. It is. Not quite sure who to pick. Tell you what, anything could happen with, with these three players with what has been going on. Um, I'm expecting Robbie to continue to raise a lot of buttons, be reluctant to fold post-flop, be very aggressive. Jesse, I think, is really picking his spots. Uh, yeah. And I think, I think I agree with you. He's the most cognizant of kind of moving up that next ladder of, of the money bubble. But I do think that that's a valid consideration at this point. Um, and with a hand like 8-3 off, for example, I do expect him to be folding his button. And then Taylor, we've seen the most creative play from pre-flop. We've seen Taylor uh, three-bet a lot of speculative hands, and so far he's gotten away with it. He's going to raise it up with a very real hand. Robbie always wears his 49ers cap when he's playing poker. He believes it's lucky. He calls the king 10. Flops a gut shot on queen 9-6. Robbie makes a pretty small bet here for his normal sizing. Quite a bit smaller than usual, and I imagine yeah. that Taylor's plan is to be check calling here. He does make the call. <laughs> Pairs the six on the turn. And Robbie, Robbie quickly checks. And a king on the river for Ravi. So he's going to get this pot. Now, what was his bet size be? 250 ish? 225. Two and a quarter. <coughs> it's a very small bet. Taylor pretty quickly folds. Let's go back to that ace deuce hand, Tony. What what are you? I mean, that was obviously a, a very important pot in the match for Taylor. Mm -hmm. He essentially would have been down to less than 20 big blinds had he called and been wrong. In fact, maybe less than 15 big blinds had he called and been wrong there. But he he pretty confidently and pretty quickly was able to make the call on three streets with ace deuce. Well, he took his time on the river. Um, certainly, I, I like his flop call. Um, I think the turn is the t the toughest call. And yeah. I'm pretty sure Ravi bet like full pot too, right? He did, yeah. 
Yeah, that one seems really close, tough, speculative, whatever you want to call it. Um, whether it's good or bad is really difficult to say. I, you know, I just <laughs> it certainly was this time. Yeah. Um, I don't fault it. Taylor for making that call. He was right this time. Um, you know, he kind of he kind of sensed that Ravi was just firing chips in there uh, a little too haphazardly. Ah, uh, man. I like his river call, that's for sure. By the time they get to the river, there's there's probably more bluffing hands than there are value betting hands. Um, but the turn is really difficult. Do you really think that anybody say. else at this final table would have played the hand that way? Probably not. I, think I don't Jesse think so. Just gave up the turn. He could have even just folded the flop. He's just been pretty, pretty fitter fold, and I don't mean that in the, like oh he's playing really tight weak type of way. Just like, you know, he he seems to take an approach to Ravi that's like okay I'm not going to put myself in these weird speculative spots right. against him. And I think I probably would would have done the same thing. Um, but nonetheless, a great hand by Taylor. And here, Taylor has opened the button. Jesse defended king five on the big blind and managed to flop top pair on king nine nine. from Taylor here. Jesse not going anywhere with his king five. Ace on the turn. Six on the reverse. Both players check the ace on the turn. What do you think about that bet from Jesse? Hmm. I think I would have checked. Yeah, I think you're better off just trying to induce a bluff that I don't think is going to come all that frequently. But uh, I just don't know how you can really get value there when there's you know a pair on the board and an right. ace out. I think your opponent's going to call kings, aces, you know, raise better hands than that. Um, yeah, I'm just not sure what you expect to get called by. Yeah, yeah, I would have checked the river. Wow, look at how even this match is right now. Very even, and since we've come back, pretty much not not too much has changed. Yeah, I Jesse said has really won a few few chips from Taylor, and that's it. I set a dumb line for our little bet, but it looks good right now. So <laughs> until you know something massive happens, and Ravi either stacks somebody or gets stacked, but Ravi with four deuce offsuit on the button, we will see if he he is indeed opening a hundred percent of buttons. Of course, four deuce offsuit is not the worst possible hand you can have, but it's close to it. Yeah, would not be opening this hand. He raises to 110. Jesse with ace eight off in the small blind. What are you thinking here? Well, if he's picking up on the fact that Ravi is opening almost 100% of buttons, then this seems like an okay hand to three bet. I mean, again, we've talked about how Ravi is very sticky and doesn't like to fold a ton, but. He seems a little more reluctant to just call 100% of hands to 3-bets pre-flop ever since he's taken a turn for the worse. It looks like he is going for a 3-bet. Mm -hmm. I think I would have flatted the ace-8 offsuit oh, out of the wow. small blind. I wouldn't be doing that. I would not be doing that. That's just inviting Taylor to punk you. Taylor does has been 3-betting a decent amount. However, <laughs> a lot of times he's just going to have, like, Jack Deuce, which is what he had, and 
you're going to be able to play a heads-up pot against Ravi, but in this case, uh, Jesse's 3-bet works out. Yeah, I would definitely size thing. I didn't see exactly what his sizing was, but I would size fairly large against Ravi. Mm -hmm. We saw Jesse fold his hand on the cutoff, four-handed, but I don't think he's going to fold it on the button. No. <coughs> and Taylor Parr with the ace-10 offsuit in the small blind. I'm expecting a three-bet here. Yeah, I agree. I think there's some chance he calls to invite Ravi into the pot, but I think he'll 3-bet. Did you play much against Taylor back in the day? Online? Yes, some, I would say. Not as much as I played against Harrison. And but did you play a lot against Jesse or no? What was his screen name? Deuces85. That one doesn't stick out in my memory as sharply. He was more of a cash game player. Yeah, then no. I didn't get into cash very much until after Black Friday. So I like this size. It's just shy of 3x, and they are pretty deep. Mm -hmm. Taylor will take that one down. It's also really tough to talk about, oh, did we play so-and-so back in the day online? Um, how does that translate to what you expect here? Well, that was four to five years ago now, and uh, a lot has changed since then. And, you know, poker has changed. Back then, 2010 was like the peak of the click era when everyone was just like three bet four bet five bet oh, i'm gonna min six bet it you know like that was that was a time in which tournament robbie would have fit right in yeah huh? we're so <laughs> aggressive pre-flop and now yeah. most of us are like raised three bet flat exactly well, i expect taylor to just fold here with three deuce as would i and he does Small raise from uh, Robbie to 110. Jesse, I imagine, is going to complete here with the King 5. Call. Mm, pretty interesting flop, Jesse, with the second pair. Ravi with a double belly buster and an overcard and the back for plus draw. A little everything. That's out pretty big. Yeah, back to his big sizing here. And Jesse will be calling on this flop with the pair of fives. I would imagine that folding or raising are probably not options that are running yeah. through his head. And an 8 on the turn will fill up that straight. Big 8 on the turn for Robbie, and he's very happy with that turn. So far, he's been a betting man. Now, has the way that Robbie has been playing, is that going to help him get additional chips in this pot? Typically, yes. It's still kind of an awkward card for Jesse. He's aware that that hits a decent amount of Ravi's range, so he might get away. But the fact that he has a strong kicker with his five might get an appeal again. And the fact that there's still flush draws out there, um, it seems close. Thus far, the way Jesse has played, I'm inclined to say he'll fold. But I, you know, if he called, it wouldn't be shocking at all. You know, with what we've seen from Ravi, he's been so barrel happy. 
I would not be folding on this turn. And I think that, that Jesse is, is probably not going to fold either. I mean, he just saw Taylor call down with ace-deuce on three streets and he, yeah. correctly. Um, and he does go ahead and make the call. Deuce on the river. Pretty safe. Would have been a disaster if Jesse found a king or a five. What will Ravi bet? Eight fifty after some deliberation. And now on the river, your Jesse Rockowitz, what are you thinking here? Well, there are numerous missed draws out there, including clubs, uh, things like nine ten or jack ten. Um, I, I would I would be calling. You would be calling? I would be calling. I think it's close. I don't know what I would do. I don't know. I would expect him to continue to fire all com all six X combos, maybe all nine X combos. Maybe all four X combos. There you have it, Kane. Right on the money. And Ravi is good with a straight. And that will put him solidly back into the chip lead. And it is obvious that the way that Ravi has been playing did allow him to get more chips in that pot. If it, certainly if that hand was against Taylor and Jesse were contemplating the turn and river decisions, he very well could have come up with a different decision, and it's likely he would have. But against Ravi, who has been so relentlessly aggressive, of course, you're going to lose some really big pots when you get it all in with ace-five against the nut, against the second nuts, or the, the uh, six-four, which made a straight, um, which I believe on that board was the second nuts, or the third nuts. And sometimes you're going to be able to actually have the nuts yourself, and you're going to uh, get called down by a relatively weak hand. So I don't fault Jesse for making that call. Uh, Robbie connects with that board really hard, and now Robbie is our new chip leader. We've got a king seven here. suited are you surprised that Taylor didn't uh, contemplate a three bet here I thought he should at least consider it but I I'm happy with the call like I said I'd probably be pretty linear against Robbie and just bet uh, raise more like good value hands and uh, particularly ones with higher cards than 10 nine suited but yeah you could certainly make an argument for it now both players check and then Robbie turns a seven I think this is a reasonable spot for Taylor to bet. Uh, he only has 10 high, and he's turned a gut shot. Robbie's repping something like ace high, king high. He's actually been following through with his ace high, so... Well, Taylor actually checked, and Robbie bet the turn. 
So now Taylor is. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, Taylor is, co is contemplating a, a call or perhaps a raise, and he does go ahead and, and make the raise here. What do you think about the the check raise here on the turn? Man, I mean it's a cool play. Again, we're doing it against a dude who really hates folding. He's, you know, Ravi's not repping a very good hand here. You expect him to bet every time he has a jack, a four, an over pair. Anything good presumably just bets the flop. So I, I right. don't blame Taylor for taking the shot here. I don't but know. I think Taylor, it's work Taylor did see him earlier uh, check back in a three-bet pot, ace, nine, on yes. nine, ten, jack, nine, pretty quickly on the turn. So it certainly is possible that Ravi could be checking back a four or an over pair or something like that. However, yes, you would expect most players to be betting those hands, and therefore you can eliminate those hands from, from their range. I don't think 9-10 is the best hand to be doing this with, but it's also not obviously the worst. I probably would be more likely to do this if I had a flush draw. Ravi will call. Ravi makes a call, and I'm, I'm expecting Taylor to give up on a lot of rivers here. Maybe he'll just get a 9 or a 10 and check it. Nope, it's a 3. I think that's a river he'll he'll give up on, but let's see if I'm right or wrong. And he does yep. give it up here. I'm curious if he would have fired on a diamond. <laughs> I think a diamond is a good river to for Taylor to go ahead and bluff on the river. So Ravi getting a little momentum back here. Well, another shot of our Royal Flush Girl Social Bar, sponsored by Monster Headphones. See Tuba hanging out over there. She's working with Brittany at this event here at Thunder Valley, Lincoln, California. She knows we're talking about her. Tube, King Queen. Tuba's from Miami. It wouldn't surprise me if she's been to a Canes game or two. I think she has. <coughs> Robbie's going to call that min raise. Both players flop a gut shot here. Check. Of course, that jack would be a disaster for Ravi. All three of the remaining players live within 70 minutes of the casino. So whatever happens, people are just driving home tonight. <laughs> exactly. Uh, check call from Ravi here. Should Jesse be thinking about firing the turn in this spot? I would be inclined to check. Yeah. Especially with what we've seen Ravi is capable of. 
I would I would be checking back on this turn. Check. He does. Ace on the river. Ravi going for it here. 375,000. I do think that that bet is going to get through. Yeah. If I had the king and the queen here, I, I would fold pretty quickly. For another bet size, I would consider calling with the nut no pair here. Um, but there are a decent amount of combos, of course, that, that did miss. 7-8, seven, 6-7, seven, uh, seven jack. Um, Eight queen, all of these combos. So if you, if you think about it combinatorically, there, while Ravi does represent pretty well uh, an ace or a ten, um, the question, is, I guess, the big question is, would he value bet a nine? Yeah, that's the big question. And also, would he make that bet with all of his missed draws? If he had jack queen, for example, would he make that bet? Or would he try to check it down and win with queen high? If he had King Jack, would he make that bet? Those are the real questions. I believe if the answer to those questions are yes, then a call becomes something that we should definitely, that Jesse should consider there with King High. But again, for that size, my, my inclination would have been to fold. I agree. Raising it up here. Call. And Jesse calls with the ten jack. Flop stop pair. Twenty is the bet from Taylor. Jesse will no doubt call. I think I may check behind and give up with the five ten here. Yeah, it's pretty close there, isn't it? S especially, I I think I in fact definitely would. Um, that's just a board that connects with so many hands that are going to be defending out of the big blind. You don't have very much equity moving mm -hmm. forward into future streets. And here's another spot where I expect Jesse to do nothing other than call. 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 He will make the call. Three of hearts on the turn. Doesn't change much. It does seem like Taylor stabs in a lot of spots with hands that have very little equity. without necessarily the intention of, of firing multiple streets. He could prove me wrong here, but I, I, I suspect that he will check this turn. Yeah, I'd be very surprised if he followed through here. Wow. And yet here we go again. Reaching for chips. I don't do too much no equity bluffing cane, particularly on brickish turns. 
Well, what he could be thinking is there are a lot of gut shot combos that Jesse could just be calling with on the flop that he's going to fold the turn. Jesse, of course, going nowhere with top pair here. Jesse not going anywhere with his top pair. And the river is a nine. Hey, oof, man, Taylor's got to slow down now, right? I would think he has to. You can't really, you know, there's not many nines you can rep with a third barrel here. I mean, I guess he would bet some of them on the turn for sure, but your opponent can also have a nine. There's a ton of missed draws out there. Your opponent's not going to be very inclined to fold the jack to you. Then again, when it's smart player on smart player, it's like, well, he knows that I shouldn't be bluffing here, so. <laughs> I would be very surprised if Taylor bets this river. Yeah. He certainly is considering it. I said, my opponent knows I shouldn't be bluffing here, so maybe he's going to bluff. Wow, he's reaching for chips. Yep. And if he's going to bluff, I like that he's going to bluff big here. Eight, that's like 850 or something. 820, and I can't imagine that Jesse will do anything other than call this river. I think he's going to need some time. I, I'm not in the habit of folding top pair when every draw on the board misses and I make it to the river. I mean, there are a lot of them. Queen 10, spades, That's, 7, 8, There are just 10, so many combos. I 4, 5. Yeah. I'm I, like, I don't really believe him for a 9 that much. 4, 7, 5, 7. I mean, spades. I would be very happy in Jesse's spot calling the river here. Maybe not very happy, but I think there's no no other way to play the hand than to call. Wow. Jesse lays it down, and maybe Taylor has a read on, on Jesse that he may be more likely than most players to fold the river. And that's that's why he justified the, the, you know, how he was able to internally justify the flop bet, the turn bet, and, of course, the, the final barrel on the river. Like I said, my opponent's not expecting me to bluff. Therefore, I'm going to get him. Sick play. I'm very, very surprised that Jesse folded that river, and I'm yeah. curious as to what rivers he was planning on calling. That's a pretty good run out for his hand. That's what I'm saying. That yeah. seems like one of the better rivers for his hand. Would he perhaps have called a spade because he thinks that Taylor's more likely to bluff a spade? I can't imagine. Ah. Uh going to depend a lot on which spade it is. Is it safe to say that Taylor has, has played the best at this final table? Yeah, I believe so. Taylor's really out there showing... Uh, how it is that he put himself in this position twice in a row. I think Jesse, you know, Jesse's played a really good final table too, and for a while I was loving the way Robbie played, but then he made a couple of really huge mistakes.
Here he flops a flush draw. The ace I board. Now we've seen Robbie check back king high before. Will he check back queen high here? Nope. On the ace high board, he's going to go ahead and take a stab. Now, if you're Taylor here, are you thinking about raising, or are you just going to call? Probably call. I would just call here. It's also nice that it's one of those textures where I don't think Ravi's just going to, like, barrel down with total air, and then if it goes check-check on the turn, I think I can successfully bluff the river fairly frequently. Exactly. Well, this board texture is not slowing Ravi Sunder down. No. Very little slows Ravi Sunder down. That's a large bet of 475,000 chips. And now if you're Taylor, you can't do anything Let's but fold. Go. And it's obvious that both of these players who have made back-to-back -back WPT final tables both want this pretty badly. Sick. He's gonna feel even worse when he finds out that he folded the best hand about 20 minutes from now. Especially when he finds out that not only was his opponent likely firing three with hands that had strong equity, but he he chose to fire three with a almost no equity hand. Taylor with a 10-6 of diamonds, completing. Taylor flops two pair on queen ten six. He likes to lead. Do you like that? I don't. Yeah, I don't know about that. Simply because I I think it's a it's a great spot to check raise. I mean we've seen Robbie take stabs at almost every flop where he had impetus and it, it's a similar thing when the small blind completes and you're in the big blind and it's checked to you it's it's almost as if you're assuming impetus in the hand and then we've seen Robbie just go nuts to check raises so I, I thought that was an opportune time for him to go ahead and attempt to check raise there yeah I think I would have I would have liked that one and he's just been you know if he has any piece of the board he hates folding those check raises we saw him lose a huge pop before because he uh, called a check raise with a gut shot and then got all the chips in on the turn when he had, what, fourth pair with exactly. the gut shot, so... Taylor with a nine-deuce offsuit on the button. I will expect him to fold here. He does indeed.
Jesse here. Flops two pair on seven seven six. Ravi, a couple of backdoor draws and overcards. with this pair. Now, I wouldn't be surprised to see Ravi get creative here, especially because the times he's, he's picked to do it seems to be times when he has a significant chip advantage over the opponent he's in the hand with. And here he, here he goes, reaching for chips. Now... You got a read on the guy. <laughs> now you're Jesse Rockowitz. You're here with a pair of sixes. You opted to see bet the flop, knowing full well that Robbie at least is raising hands like eight nine, nine ten, five eight. And you're here with your pair of sixes. What do you what are you what are you doing? I mean, considering the way Robbie has played, I'm pretty tempted to just not fold. I don't think he's check raising me for value with a six. It's either seven or some kind of draw, of which there are numerous out here. Right. I would be calling here on the flop. Yeah. And I would, depending on what the turn is, I'm, I'm going to be reluctant to continue on hearts. Yes, of course. And I'm going to be reluctant to continue on when 8-9 like nine completes. Eight, nine, yeah. Ten. Specifically on a 5. Yeah. But on many other turns, I'm, I'm going to be happy to put the chips in. Let's see. Call. He does call. <laughs> this is a 10. Well, Ravi, this is a good card for you to go ahead and follow through on. Let's see what you want to do with it. Oh, he's going to follow through. Inquiring how much he's playing. It's about a 1.3 to 1 stack to pot ratio here on the turn. Follows through for about half of Jesse's remaining stack. I'm trying to figure out if I were in Ravi's if I were in Ravi's shoes, what size I would bet on this turn. It's a really it's a really sticky kind of spot because you're you're trying to rep a seven, so if you have a seven, you you don't want to. There's no reason for you to bet that big, right? But of course, you don't want to give the illusion of fold equity. Oh, you bet about two thirds pot, right? Yeah, but I mean, if you have a seven here, and Jesse wow, believe him. Jesse goes all in. If you do have a seven here with the pot to stack ratio, there, I would think there's no reason you need to bet that big. Six so part. now, six so part now, is if Ravi could see his hand, it's an easy call. Of course. <laughs> Knowing Ravi, I'm expecting him to make the call for for another five hundred seventy-five thousand. Uh, I wouldn't be so sure.
There you go. <laughs> there it is. You're much better at this game than me. Man, we could have made another bet. I know. Well, I wasn't that confident. 13 outs for Robbie going to the river. It's such a great card, uh, great hand for his opponent to have. That was a great read by Jesse there. Yeah. I would have folded Jack Six on that turn. I think I would have too. It's just, ugh. It's not the card I'm looking for. A bunch of cards we're going for. I don't know about the 10. And a jack on the river will not do it. Jesse will double up. I get closer to 20 cane dollars. <laughs> Jesse Rockowitz really well played there, uh, betting the flop for value, mm -hmm. calling a check raise, and then having the the wherewithal to go all in on the turn and just kind of say, hey, you know, uh, there's not very much fold equity here, but I think my uh, my opponent's frequencies are so out of whack that I'm just going to go with my hands here. And Jesse still is the short stack at the table, but now we're again back in this situation where all the players are between 3.5 and 4.1 million chips essentially.